a warm welcome from my side. So um, we will talk today um, also a bit about value, what we have heard before, but in a different context. So now we talk about economic value. So politics of large projects, why economics don't always work. So that's the question we deal with tonight. And um, let me start with uh, two pictures where I actually directly demonstrate you what I mean by this. So now this is the airport of Chicago, right? <laughs> Again, an aviation example, but it usually works best to explain. <laughs> so you see, this is Chicago airport. We see it's a huge uh, infrastructure project that was built up, has multiple runways, thousands of employees work there. Then we have the other extreme point. This, this take, uh, picture was taken on my last vacation in Spain somewhere. So you see here roads, I will do the next slide here again, showing it closer. This road led to a place to nowhere. So the question is, why would you ever build such a road, right? So what is the economic benefit of such a road? And does it have anything to do with um, gains that you get out of this? So that's the question. So that would be then a typical negative example, how you spend your money, right? We don't want to do that. So, I want to show you the road goes even on with a roundabout here and there yeah, nothing happens still. <laughs> now, I want to show you the problem is measuring those effects, right? Because um, it's not easy. We have different steps of measuring. So first, I go back on the airport example. Um, in order to show economic uh, impacts, so you first have the direct effects. The direct effects is suggested by um, researchers that uh, these are the employees directly associated to the project they are working with. That means, for example, in an airport, every, the direct effect, the direct employee effect, so the job effect that you create, are all employees working at the airport company and for the work airport company. Then we have the indirect effects. The indirect effects is all employment which occurs because we have that infrastructure project. This is, for example, the flight schools, the maintenance hall that you have next to the airport, that would be the indirect effect. Then we have the induced effect. That's the third category. Now it gets already a bit more complicated. These jobs are calculated or pr produced by the other two guys, so the direct and indirect people who are associated with the project, and they now spend their income that they get. And this, again, employs people. And then we have the very catalytic effect, so now we are really in, in research here and this is usually neglected because it's so hard to measure it and to find out the concrete number. It is actually the effect of a company moving to a strong area. Let's say, f um, to imagine this, we have in Germany the Rhein-Ruhr-Gebiet, which is a very strong economic power uh, motor of, of Germany. So if I would have to do the decision to set up my business and I wouldn't take care about taxes and so on, I rather would go there because I have my suppliers directly there, I have a good infrastructure there and so on. So it is the question then if a company moves there, what is the marginal benefit for the whole region out of one company? And then this is usually if you analyze this, um, this is usually neglected because it's very hard to measure what the benefit is for the overall region. Now I want to show you the problem with this is that it's only recommendation how you do that. So the, if you look at economic impact studies, I went there to a regional airport, uh, unfortunately I can't say the name, but um, so we see here that 162 people were employed by the report. This is what the report stated beforehand. So and this if you then took a look if the indirect and induced effects so the people living around there and working there, they said, so the airport gives additional jobs of 1.5 additional, so 150% additional jobs, so to say. And, well, I went there during my bachelor thesis because I was analyzing those measures how, that you can take, and I actually found out, how do you get to up those numbers, that actually 24 people were working directly there. Why is this? Because the study which looked at the airport included the indirect and direct effect, so to say, so avoided the recommendations, took that together as a direct effect and then went out and say, okay, what are the indirect and induced effects? And here you have the multiplier. So they, they double counted 
Yeah, they double counted the economic effects. So you see here, I have 24 people worked here and I actually found out during my research that indirect induced effect were 138 people. So totally, we had totally different significant, uh, significance of economic benefits that you get. Now I want to show you also the researchers are not very clear if you look at other examples where if here, um, for example, Klopphaus looked at Leipzig Altenburg 2007 they had a multiplier effect of 2.2, uh, 0.23, and then just a few years uh, later, it was then 1.6. So we don't know what happened there, but you can see that sometimes even those numbers change. And actually, um, Hudarek, who is um, researching this, um, said that the input-output analysis, so this is the, the method which is used by this, um, is very common right now, at least here I have the, the, uh, the graph for uh, the aviation sector because um, this is an easy method to calculate and like I said before, maybe also an easy method to change the results. So this um, result has, a, or this method has a significantly importance gained over the year. Now I want to show you some other problems. The other problem is what is the share um, of people actually using the infrastructure project or the big project that you want. Let's say, for example, you uh, decide on investing a big project, right? And um, you maybe you, you consider maybe do we build a, a mall or do we do an airport? And we see actually that depending on the project that you do, there are maybe sometimes more people leaving the, uh, the, the area. For example, like an airport, in regional airports, the rule is 80 20, so 80% leaving, then 20% tourists are coming in. So that, that doesn't really make sense because tourism are not coming in to spend their money. So it's a question, what is the share of coming in going out of tourism whatsoever of people? Then we have regional and national. Um, the problem is here that uh, recommendations are set on a um, national level, but not on a regional level. So there are recommendations on national levels, but the question is how do you, do the, how do you extract those recommendations on regional levels? And then we have here the Great, the great Mall, well, it looks pretty nice. Um, so if you look at the impact studies, the question is what causes what? Because usually, or sometimes what happens in those economic impact studies, or if you do a project, is that um, they, uh, the one says that uh, we are here and provide so many jobs, but and then the other one who also should, is affected says the, uh, exactly the same. So basically the question is who was there first and why is it on, and which direct or indirect effect, effect is it now? So that's also the question um, that you need to be carefully looking at. Then also, the, I, li I really like this picture here, surely there's an easier way of moving files if you only always consider about jobs, right? The jobs that you want to gain because you have a big financial project and you establish a big project is that sometimes you create inefficiencies, right? So why is Germany financing all those regional airports that no one uses a lot? It's because right this, so they just want to have employment, but is it really efficient? Huh? That's the question. Do we need those? Or could we do something else? That's the question. And then also, <laughs> not sure if entered um, password correctly, I'm just getting fired. This actually <laughs> means to the point that um, if we spend one money there, let's say we finance a big project from our pocket from the government money, but then we ha don't have the money on the other side. Maybe it would be better if we you know, have those people not having employed there and maybe put them in a restructuring program and have actually the money somewhere else where it's really necessary. So it's also a question of uh, how is then the relation of profit and losses. Then there are two types of people in this world, those who can extrapolate from incomplete data and the rest we don't know. So the question is also how do you measure those effects if sometimes you don't have data available and um, yeah, how should you then deal with incomplete data? It's a usual question that we mostly have in evaluating companies or economic benefits. It's the question is, is the data there or not? Then also, thanks to inflation, I'm only worth 11 cents. That's, if you look back at the economic, um, yeah, now people get it, okay. So, <laughs> all right, good that you're awake. Yeah? So, and um, this actually means if I compare the economic benefits over time, uh, 
then we should also consider we had inflation, we have price changes and so on. Because what you can do with those studies is if I know how many people work in a region and I more or less know their gen the average income, then of course I know how much money I create with income in that region, right? But we should take care also that we have those price changes and we have inflation. So all in all, I would say, yeah, we need clear definitions set on regional levels. Then maybe the input output analysis I just described. So you take, you look there and um, you just count employment and maybe um, the, the, the revenues that you get out of this. So the income, maybe this is not all. Maybe you should have a cost benefit analysis where you try to consider more points. And then third point is uh, for all research, Try to be honest or be honest with your data. If you encounter something which doesn't make sense, state it clearly and yeah, don't uh, just do because you know you are dependent on whatsoever. We want your academic freedom and I think that's the best you can do, right? Teach academic freedom. So, thank you very much. So the greatest challenge was um, the timing. So uh, because I only had one week to, to go around everyone, everywhere and it was 40 degrees outside. It was one of the hottest weeks in Germany. And was, I was actually dressed up like this. I was like going around to the, all the companies which were around the area of the airport, right? And it was, I was at the end. So after I went asking those people, in the night I could sleep very well because I was so exhausted. So that was a big challenge, yeah? So that was, yeah, really. Um, okay, so. <laughs> okay. Um, so how did it feel being on stage? Is this your first time? And was it fun? <laughs> so since uh, probably I assume that most of you never heard this before, I could also talk to have something wrong and you wouldn't notice, so that's why. <laughs> I, I, wa I was confident, yeah, so. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.